It's Monday here in New Zealand, so you know what that means. Major League Rugby has been on over the weekend, so I've had a wee look at uh, a bit of the action. Not as much, again, as I would like. The new uh, university semester has just started here in New Zealand, and that's my day job and office job at the university. So we've been busy, but I saw a wee bit. I managed a little bit... Um, I managed to catch, and I was pretty glad I did, the end of uh, Houston's game against Rooney, which was on here this afternoon. That one was a bit of a nail-biter at the finish, and I managed to watch all but the start of the Gilgronies up against Old Glory DC. Uh, I watched that one not live, but also not knowing the score. So yeah, I did manage to sneak in a wee bit, which uh, means a little bit. Um, and yeah, it was a bit of fun. I'll go through some of the results which I've seen, but as I said, the amount of action I have seen is, is rather limited. You guys will have to fill in the blanks uh, for me. For Houston, the Sabercats up against Rooney. Uh, Rooney's looking all right now because they go to three, uh, three wins and one loss. So looking pretty good. Uh, like I said, I only saw the end. Houston just with the one win. Uh, the last 10 minutes, there was only one point in it. Uh, Houston had a, a mall turnover, so they managed to get the ball, but they were stuck in their own 22 for what seemed like an age. They just couldn't get out, and eventually uh, Marcus Walsh managed to get uh, a try right at the death, which gave a very valuable bonus point to Rooney. Um, which was a bit heartbreaking for, um, for the, for the Houston guys, because it seems like it was a bit of a, a crazy game. I mean, they probably deserved more out of it, but good on Rooney for getting the win. Uh, it was a pretty nice, I mean, they'd, they'd intercepted the ball like a phase before had, uh, had Rooney and then, yeah, Marcus Walsh just uh, threw a, a good dummy and just went straight over for the try so that will finish 31 23 good win for them uh for the austin dc game i couldn't see a whole lot of crowd at least on the side that i was that was like in the sun i don't know if there are more people in the shade i was watching this at work so kind of having to sneak between work and actual watching so i was listening and watching and screen hopping between the two screens at the time but there didn't seem to be a whole lot of people they did mention the game was played in San, Ant San Antonio, which, if I'm not mistaken, is also in Texas, but is not, it's not Austin, right? So someone will have to tell me why they were playing a game in San Antonio. Was it just to spread the game? Or, uh, yeah, maybe they didn't get many home fans to it because, I don't know. Someone please explain. I must say that the crowd was pretty vocal. They were not large in number, but they were loud because I could hear them chanting and there seemed to be a fair few kids there, which is again good if you're going to grow the game at grassroots level. And they were in for a bit of entertainment as well. The game went out like 20-0 to, to DC at one point. And then the Gilgronis actually managed to get their way back into the game. It was, what was it? Four, 23 points to 14 in DC's favor for ages. And you felt like, man, the Gilgronis just need one more score. And they're right back into it. And sure enough, former All Black Frank Halley, uh, he got to try to make it 23-19. But then uh, DC got the last try at the death to make it. There was like two minutes to play maybe, but it was 28 points to 19 in the end. So another one, both those games kind of similar. And that both the Texan teams maybe deserved a wee bit more out of the game. I keep saying a wee bit, uh, a little bit more out of the game. Someone asked me once, what does a wee bit mean? And a fair few, that kind of thing, because uh, regional differences in languages. Um, but yeah, I felt unlucky for both those teams. So the Gilgronis are still winless. They have had the draw, but three losses in a draw at this point. So they're propping up the table from the bottom. Uh, DC, like Rooney, are three wins and one loss, so not looking too bad. What makes this interesting is that both these Texan teams lost. They both not got great records, but the next week's game sees them meet each other. So that should be... Uh, a fascinating game. I think I'll have to try my best to watch that game. Even though it is two teams towards the bottom of the table, I'm still keen to see how they go. And I'm not sure what the rivalries are like in MLR. It's only been three years of the third season, so I'm not sure how established the rivalries are. Are there teams that genuinely don't like each other? Is it like a geographic thing or is it like a history thing uh, in terms of recent results? Or, But I would have thought 
both teams being from Texas, they would like to get a win over each other. So that one uh, should be pretty interesting. Oh, glory at one point were defending for an age. So even though they were 20 points up, they were defending for ages. And eventually uh, they got yellow carded for giving away too many infringements. Austin scrum just powered over and they ended up getting a penalty try. They came right back into it. But as I said, they didn't get anything from the game. So a bit unfortunate for them and the few people who were there to watch it in San Antonio. But um, yeah competitive game which was nice to see uh the other results of the games i haven't seen nola lost to san diego 21 25 which is a close result at least san diego kind of looking mortal seeing as they didn't just blow uh nola away so nola's at 500 and san diego is uh tracking really well with four from four colorado picked up their first win over utah that was 22 points to 14 that's impressive uh, they've got now one win, three losses, Utah, a win, two losses and a draw. So kind of a mixed bag for them so far. Uh, Seattle finally got their season underway in pretty good style. But it looks at things, 44 points to 29 over New England. That must've been a fun game to watch. Lots of tries. Uh, Seattle, one win, three losses, New England, one win, three losses. So they're after their opening weekend, they've gone three losses on the trot. So it's not ideal. Uh, and ATL lost to the arrows, 28 points to 18. Again, uh, it's not too bad a result, and the, the arrows still look mortal. They only won by 10 points, but they are also four from four. So that's why I put here. Is it San Diego against Toronto at this point? Those teams are looking like heavy favorites, but still four games into the season, it is kind of hard to tell. ATL also um, tracking at 500. So, um, yeah. Next week should be interesting. Austin against Houston, like I said, um, I think that's going to have to be the game that I watch. Will the Kilgronies get their first win as the Kilgronies? Will the Austin team get their first win? I think they said since 2018. That's been ages. But um, yeah, plenty to look forward to. You guys do fill me in on the gaps for the games that I didn't see. Uh, as I said, um, pretty limited in the time. But it has been fun to kind of follow along. Uh, even if I didn't get to see all the games. And um, yeah, tell me about the rivalries. What they're like in MLR. Which are the teams that uh really don't like each other and is it a geographic thing or is there uh, other reasons behind it but um yeah cheers guys drop us a like talk to you again soon see you later